Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, this is the tutorial 7th problem solution. Okay, and uh, there were some of the subscribers who told that Krish try to make a series of problem statements saying that, okay, just make like 50 problem series or 100 problem series with respect to competitive programming and just number it as problem number 6, problem number 7, like problem number 6 question, problem number 6 solution. So this is basically the problem number seven solution. So I liked his suggestion. So based on that, this title that you'll be seeing is that problem seventh solution, finding the time complexity. If you remember guys, I had already given you this particular problem statement and considering this particular problem statement, I had asked you that what is the time complexity for this particular function and the various option was O and to the power of three O that is big O notation. Worst case, I had asked, I had given you the option with respect to big no, big o, or big O notation or the worst case. So you have n square and n to the power of 5 and the fourth option is n multiplied by n minus 1. This is nothing but guys, this is also can be treated as order of n square. Okay, because n multiplied by n is nothing but n square minus n. Okay, now considering this, let's understand how do you find the complexity. There were many, many answers where people told that the output of this should be order of n cube. Okay, but the right solution to this is order of n to the power of 2, n to the power of 5. This is the right answer. I could see hardly 3 to 4 people telling this particular answer correctly. So we'll try to understand how to find out the time complexity. Remember guys, time complexity can be found out in an amazing way. I've already discussed in my previous video in competitive programming playlist. Remember, whenever there is a for loop, that basically means it is going to run for that many number of times. Suppose in this particular case, you can see that my for loop, right? Suppose, and, and one more thing that I'll say guys, whenever you have just a single instruction like this, this will take one time, okay? But this is inside a for loop, right? So how many number of times this for loop will run? It will be running n times. So let's take this n times. So this is my first time, right? n times. After this, one important thing that you see, there is a while loop. Here, your while loop says j is less than i multiplied by i. What does this basically mean? i will be iterating between 1 to n. So here, can I take n multiplied by n times this while loop will be running, right? This while loop will run n multiplied by n times because i will be running between 1 to n, right? So this many number of times will be running if this while loop is present inside for loop. So the outer loop will be running for n times, the inner while loop will be learning for n multiplied by n times. Finally, you can see that this is also a single instruction. So one time, this is also a single instruction that is one time. But again, you have a for loop. Now in this particular for loop, it is basically running between zero comma j. Now what is this j, right? What is this j? This j is nothing but i. Now considering this, here also, inside this while loop is present, so this will also be running n multiplied by n times. Now, if I try to see the total number of times that it will be running, finally, you can see that n multiplied by n is nothing but n square, multiplied by n square, and multiplied by n. So the total number of time will be n to the power of 5. So your worst case is nothing but n to the power of 5 for this problem solution. Similarly, you should try to solve this particular problem. Okay, in this way, you have to solve this particular problem, then only you will be able to understand it very, very easily. Okay, again, guys, I'm telling you, since this while condition is j is less than i multiplied by i, then only it will be running inside this loop. So whenever we go with this for loop, it will be running for n multiplied by n times, because j is always less than i multiplied by i, right? So this is the overall solution that I wanted to show you with respect to this particular use case. Now considering this, probably I had given you an idea of time complexity. What I will do is that in the upcoming problem statements, uh, I will be giving more use cases, more complicated use cases. You have to come up with a solution uh, with respect to competitive programming, but this is just a way to tell you. Now, similarly, you have to actually solve what is the time complexity for this, for this particular function. Just let me know guys, what is the time complexity for this? I'll not give you the option, but definitely you should give me the answer. Here the range is between n divided by 2 comma n. Now here whenever 
n divided by 2 comma n is there i will basically be using log n i'll just give you this hint but just tell me the entire time complexity that you are calculating so i hope you like this particular video now in my tutorial of problem statement 8 i'll be coming up with a competitive programming which will involve some more good techniques some more complicated techniques some more confusing topics right so let's uh, make sure that you watch this playlist entirely and yes tomorrow i'll be uploading one more video on that so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you and all bye bye